Hi, welcome to MedManage. This is Dr. Ram here. So I'm going to explain the counter current multipliers and exchangers in this video. I'm going to take it step by step and definitely you are going to understand this concept very clearly by the end of this video. So here is a cortex of a kidney which is the outer portion and this is the medulla which is the inner portion. So in this illustration, I want to show you the osmolarity of a medulla is very high when compared with the cortex. And this is very important point because you will know at the end of a session that this high medullary osmolality is very important for the reabsorption of water. Fine. So here is the cortex and here is the medulla. The osmolarity of a cortex about 300 milliosmoles per liter and medulla slowly increases as you go deep inside. At the tip of medulla it is around 1200 milliosmoles per liter. Now a question that comes to your mind how is this high medullary osmolarity is achieved and what is the importance of this high medullary osmolarity and this is explained by the concept which is the counter current mechanism what is mean by this counter current so as you can see this is the inflow and outflow so the inflow and outflow is parallel proximity and opposite in direction so this is called a counter current flow Fine. So we have counter current flow in the loop of Henle. I'm coming to that. Okay. But before that, you have to spend one minute in this important basics. If you understand this, this session is going to be very easy. Just a minute. Fine. So what is osmolarity and how does the water move inside the body? So the osmolarity means the concentration of a solute. For example, I put some six dots here. I put some six dots here. So this is the osmolarity of the compartment A and this is the osmolarity of B. So both are equal, am I right? For example, say 300, here is 300 and they are equal. And this is separated by a membrane which is permeable only to water and not to the solute. Now a question to you. If the osmolarity of A and B are equal, where does the water move? From A to B or B to A or there is no moment of water. So are you saying there is no moment of water? That's right because since the osmolarity is equal there is no moment of water. I'm going to give you one more illustration. So here the osmolarity in A is very low than B. Fine. So now where does the water move? From A to B or B to A or there is no moment of water? And the answer is from A to B. Say for example, the osmolarity here is 100 and here it is 300. So water moves from A to B. What is the reason? So here there is low concentration of a solute than B. So the osmotic pressure is created that pushes the water from A to B. There is one more way to think. Here in A, there is low concentration of a solute and also high concentration of water. Am I right? So this water moves from higher region to lower region. So until the osmolarity becomes equal, water will be moving. For example, if you remove some portion of water, what happens to this concentration of a solute? This increases, am I right? If you add more water to B, the concentration of a solute decreases. Say for example, 100 to 150 and this drops to 300 to 250 water will still be moving because there is no equal osmolarity until the osmolarity becomes equal water will be moving and then stops now the water movement stops there is no movement of water if you understand this that's it you finish this session let's move further so how is a high osmolarity achieved in medulla keep on thinking this question the answer is the counter current multipliers that is the loop of Henle and the vasa recta which is going to act as counter current exchangers. Okay, so what is the shape of a loop of Henle? Option A or option B? Option A. So it's a bent loop and this bent loop is going to provide the counter current flow. So here is the loop of Henle. This is a bent loop. And because of this bent loop, the multiplication of osmolarity is going to happen. I'm going to explain that in a while. So here is the loop of Henle. There is a counter current flow. This bent loop provides a counter current flow and this increases the medullary osmolarity. But how? I'm going to show you some illustration here. Okay. So the descending loop of Henle and the ascending loop of Henle behaves different. 
And here is a proximal convoluted tubule that pushes the fluid into the loop of Henle. And here is a distal convoluted tubule that receives fluid from the ascending loop of Henle. Fine. Okay. Note this two important point. The descending loop of Henle is permeable only to water and not to solutes. Here the ascending loop of Henle is permeable only to solutes and not to water. Note that you have some important transporters here. I'm not going into detail but note that there is sodium potassium 2 chloride pump. This is going to push solutes from the ascending loop of Henle into the interstitium. In order to make sure you know this point, take this test. The descending loop of Henle is permeable to water or not? Yes or no? Yes, good. Also, is it permeable solutes? No. And ascending loop of Henle, is it permeable to water? No. Is it permeable to solutes? Yes. Good. Okay, make sure you know this point. So the osmolarity of a cortex around 300 milliosmoles as you go down the medulla, it reaches about 1200 milliosmoles at the tip of medulla. Fine, this is explained by the concept of countercurrent mechanism. Note that these are all hypothetical steps. This is just an explanation to the increased medullary osmolarity. It don't occur in vivo, right? Take note. I'm going to explain this with the help of some simple illustration. So the osmolarity inside the tubule is 300 and let's assume the interstitium osmolarity is also 300. Since both are equal, do you think the water moves? The water don't move anywhere. And remember the transporters here is continuously working hard and pushes the solutes from the ascending limb into the interstitium. Like this. So if more and more solutes comes out of ascending limb, this number decreases and this number increases. Am I right? Say for example, this becomes 200 and this becomes 400. And now see how the multiplication starts. Now the osmolarity in the descending limb and the interstitium is different. Do you see that? This limb is permeable to water. Now water moves from the descending limb into the interstitium. Until this becomes 400, the water will be moving. When it reaches 400, the water movement stops. Like this. See how the multiplication is happening. And now, you should remember more and more fluid coming out of a proximal canal tubule into this loop of Henle. So bringing more and more solutes like this. And this transport is also working hard and pushing more and more solutes out of a ascending limb. Say for example, this becomes 600 now. And this goes on decreasing. Again, there is a difference between the osmolarity of a descending limb and the interstitium. So the water starts to move from this 400 area to the 600 area. So until this becomes 600, water will be moving. So this becomes 600. Fine. So this goes on increasing until it becomes about 1200 milliosmoles per liter at the tip of a medulla. You have to note the fluid that is entering the distal convoluted tubule is hypoosmolar. I'm going to give you some example numbers here. Say for example, 300 milliosmoles is in the cortex. And as you go down, this slowly increases to up to 1200. Why? Because water is moving out of a descending limb here. So it goes on increasing and as you ascend through the ascending limb, this goes on decreasing because the transporters here is pushing more and more solutes out of ascending limb. So this goes on decreasing until it reaches around 110 milliosmoles. This is a hypoosmolar fluid entering the distal conduit tubule. Now you understand the high osmolarity of a fluid when compared to the cortex. And this is due to the counter current flow which is provided by the loop of Henle and this counter current flow is going to multiply the osmolarity in the medulla. Very beautiful concept. One important question, there is a blood flow to every organ in the human body. Like the same, the kidney is having very good blood flow like this. Why not the blood flow washes away these solutes? Because I said the solutes are very important for the reabsorption of water. You will understand this point at the end of the session. So keep on thinking, why not the blood flow in the kidney washes away the solutes in the medulla? It is because of the vasa recta, which is the capillaries, very special capillaries present in the medulla. This is going to act as countercurrent exchangers. 
So the vasa recta here, which is present in the medulla, is going to act as a counter current exchanger and it don't remove the solutes. This is because it has very slow blood flow. This point is very important. Take it down. Very slow blood flow. It is because of a very slow blood flow. The solutes are not removed. I'm going to explain this with the help of some illustrations here. So here is the vasa recta. This is the descending limb and the ascending limb. And the blue screen, just imagine it as a medulla. And the osmolarity here is very high. So imagine more solutes in the blue screen here. So the solutes are going to enter into the vasa recta, right? So the solutes entering the vasa recta moves like this and as it ascends up these solutes for example the sodium chloride and urea is exchanged note that the sodium chloride and urea these are the major contributors to the medullary osmolarity these are not taken into the general circulation these are going to stay in the medulla and contribute to the high medullary osmolarity what happened to the water here so the water that is going to get reabsorbed into the general circulation. So that is why I said the high medullary osmolarity is very important for the reabsorption of water. And slow blood flow to the vasa recta is very important because the sodium chloride urea, these are the major contributors to medullary osmolarity. This is going to stay in the medulla that is resulting in the reabsorption of water. This is vasa recta acting as counter current exchangers. Fine, I hope you like this video. Before I summarize, hit that like button if you like this video. And if you want to stay updated with med madness, you can hit that subscribe button. Fine, so the loop of Henle is a counter current multiplier because of a bent loop. So the ascending limb of loop of Henle is going to push more and more solutes into the medulla. And the descending limb is going to push water out. And this water is reabsorbed with the help of vasa recta and goes into the general circulation. And a sodium chloride urea is recirculated because of a slow blood flow in the vasa recta. So vasa recta is a perfect for counter current exchangers. I hope you like this video. See you with more interesting videos. Thank you for watching Med Madness.